Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So today in this video, we will see the field that is generated by two point isotropic sources. So what do you mean by isotropic sources? Before we go into this, we need to know what isotropic sources are. So let us consider two antennas or two sources which has got the same intensity of radiation in all the directions. Then if it has the same intensity of radiation in all the directions, then they are said to be isotropic sources as simple as that so now let us consider such two isotropic sources okay so guys let us assume these two as two isotropic sources so let this be isotropic source number one and let this be isotropic source number two okay so now we have considered two isotropic point sources let these two sources be separated by a particular distance d so now let the distance between these two sources be equal to d so now let us consider a particular origin in between these two points in order to act as a particular reference point. So let this particular point O act as an origin that is for the purpose of reference that is as a reference point. So now let us assume that these two sources have got a particular radiation at an angle phi that is if this is the plane then let this be the particular radiation that is this radiation happens at an angle phi. Okay, so let us assume that this particular, these two sources have got a particular radiation at an angle phi. So therefore, if this angle is phi, this will also be phi. So therefore, here the both these sources have a particular radiation at an angle phi. So therefore, if these two sources have a radiation at an angle phi, then the electric field that is generated by these two sources will also be along the same direction that is along this particular angle phi. So now in this, let this particular distance, that is the distance between the point source and the origin and the other point source and the origin, let it be exactly half of the distance between these two point sources. That is, if this is d, then let us take it as d by 2 and d by 2. That is, let this distance be d by 2 and let this distance be d by 2. So here, now let us see the radiation that is produced by these two sources. Okay, listen very carefully because this is very simple. So now when we consider the radiation produced by these two sources, so these two sources, it is found that they are moving in this particular direction. Okay, so when this is moving in this particular direction, it moves somewhat like this. This is how it moves. Okay, so when it moves like this, we see that a particular radiation that is produced by source 2 reaches a particular point first when compared to the particular radiation that is produced by source 1. Very simple. That is, if this is moving like this, then when we reach a particular point, first this, so that is in this, in this direction, this point will reach here first. Then only this point will reach. That is, the radiation produced by point 2 will reach a particular point first when compared to the radiation that is produced by point 1. So therefore, as a result of this, a particular phase lag is found. That is, there is a particular lag from the particular radiation that is produced by source 2 and source 1. That is, the radiation produced by source 2 leads by the radiation that is produced by source 1 by a particular factor. That is, a particular lag factor is found. So how do we find the particular lag? by which this particular radiation lags behind this particular radiation. Then for that, from this point, let us drop a perpendicular on top of this. So let a perpendicular be dropped. So now, by dropping the perpendicular, we have this is 90 degree. And therefore, we know this angle to be phi because the radiation happens at an angle phi with respect to this particular axis. And therefore, this particular lag is given as d cos phi so this particular lag is d cos phi so this lag is referred to as the path difference that is the difference in the path between the source 1 and source 2 so this path difference is given as d cos phi therefore the path difference is d cos phi so so now here since the amount of current that is flowing through each source is equal, therefore the magnitude of the electric field that is generated by point source 1 and point source 2 will be equal. That is the magnitude value. That is if the magnitude of electric field produced by source 1 is given as E1 
and if the magnitude of the electric field that is produced by source 2 is given as E2 then E1 is equal to E2 and let us assume this value to be E0 because E1 is equal to E2 and let us assume this value as E0 okay so now we have to find the phase difference so the phase difference can be found out using this path difference okay so now if 2 pi is the phase difference for lambda wavelength let 2 pi be the phase difference for lambda wavelength then what is the phase difference for d cos phi the phase difference for d cos phi is given as 2 pi by lambda into d cos phi very simple basic mathematics so therefore the total phase difference is given as 2 pi by lambda into d cos phi so therefore we have found out the path difference and the total phase difference and the electric field magnitude e1 is equal to e2 therefore it is taken as e0 so here let this 2 pi by lambda be taken as a constant beta okay so if it is taken as beta then the total phase difference is given as beta d cos phi so therefore this beta d cos phi in beta d cos phi beta is a particular constant which represents 2 pi by lambda and d is nothing more than the spacing between these two particular antenna sources so here in this case if a particular initial phase of alpha is present then very simple the particular along with this particular equation total phase difference we just add the particular initial phase value alpha that is if an initial phase of alpha is present then the total phase difference is equal to beta d cos phi plus alpha as simple as that so here it is found that the point source 2 leads by a particular phase psi by 2 and point source 1 lags behind by a particular phase psi by 2 that is point source 2 leads by a phase psi by 2 and point source 1 lags by a phase psi by 2 so therefore as a result of this the electric field that is produced by point source 1 is given as E1 is equal to magnitude of E1 we found that it is equal to E0 therefore E0 into E raised to because it lags by a phase psi by 2 it is given as E raised to minus J psi by 2 similarly the value of electric field produced by source 2 is given as e2 is equal to magnitude of e2 is given as e0 because they are equal so e2 is equal to e0 into e raised to because it leads by a phase psi by 2 e raised to plus j psi by 2 so this is the value of the individual electric fields that is produced by the isotropic point sources point 1 and point source 2 so now the total electric field is given as just the basic sum of E1 and E2 that is the total electric field E is equal to E1 plus E2 which is equal to E0 into E raised to minus J psi by 2 plus E0 into E raised to plus J psi by 2 therefore taking E0 common outside we get E0 into E raised to minus J psi by 2 plus E raised to plus J psi by 2 E0 into E raised to minus J psi by 2 plus E raised to plus J psi by 2 so now here dividing and multiplying this equation by 2 we get a 2 over here and divided by 2 over here and when we do this this particular equation now turns out to be the equation of cos of a particular angle that is cos of a particular angle theta is equal to e raised to minus j theta plus e raised to plus j theta by 2 so therefore this can be written as this is equal to 2 e0 into cos psi by 2 so now the value of psi was found to be beta d cos phi substituting this value beta d cos phi into this we get this equal to 2 e0 cos of beta d cos phi by 2 and now if an initial phase of alpha is present then this equation becomes equal to 2 e0 cos of beta d cos phi plus alpha by 2 
this thus is the total electric field that is produced by uh, two isotropic point sources which is separated by a particular distance d and which has got a radiation at an angle phi. So here summing it up isotropic point sources are sources which has got the intensity of radiation equal in all the directions. So when we consider two such isotropic point sources which has got a radiation at an angle phi then we find that the particular radiation produced by point source 2 leads when compared to the particular radiation produced by point source 1. So therefore in order to find the particular lag we drop a perpendicular on top of this particular radiation and we find the lag to be d cos phi that is the part difference is given as d cos phi. So here since the current that is given to point source 1 and point source 2 are equal therefore the particular electric field magnitude value of electric field E1 is equal to E2 therefore it is taken as a constant E0. Okay. So now the phase difference can be calculated by this part difference that is if 2 pi is the phase difference for lambda wavelength then the total phase difference is given as 2 pi by lambda into d cos pi where this particular 2 pi by lambda can be written as a constant which is given as beta and if an initial phase of alpha is present inside this particular system then that value of alpha can also be added to this beta d cos pi giving it as beta d cos pi plus alpha. So therefore the point source 2 leads by a phase of psi by 2 and the point source 1 lags by a phase of psi by 2. So therefore the electric field that is produced by the point source 1 is given as E1 is equal to magnitude of E1 which is E0 into E raised to minus J psi by 2 because this lags behind by a phase psi by 2 and the value of electric field E2 is equal to magnitude of E2 which is given as E0 into E raised to because it leads by a phase psi by 2 e raised to plus j psi by 2. So therefore the total electric field is given as e is equal to e1 plus e2 is equal to e0 and e raised to minus j psi by 2 plus e0 and e raised to plus j psi by 2. So in this by taking e0 common outside we get e0 into e raised to minus j psi by 2 plus e raised to plus j psi by 2 and therefore multiplying and dividing it by 2 we get this particular expression same as the value of cos of a particular angle. So therefore we get 2 e0 cos psi by 2 which is equal to 2 into e0 into cos beta d cos phi by 2 because the value of psi was found out here as a total phase difference beta d cos phi therefore which is equal to 2 e0 cos beta d cos phi by 2 and if an initial phase value alpha is present we simply just add the value alpha at the end that is 2 into e0 cos beta d cos phi plus alpha divided by 2. This thus is the expression for the electric field that is produced by two isotropic point sources. So I hope you guys have a clear idea of the field that is produced by two isotropic point sources. So we will be discussing much more about array or antenna arrays in the subsequent videos of this particular module. So stay tuned and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.